Hi, and welcome back to this, the 13th episode of my complete overhaul of this uh, Sieg 7x12 mini lathe. So far, I've overhauled the bed, overhauled the headstock, done the cross slide and saddle, and f as of last week I'd made a new set of gibs to hold the uh, saddle down, and I'm just in the process of fitting these and scraping them in. So that's what we're going to start with today. At the end of last week, I blued up the uh, bottom of the saddle and seen that it's not quite flat. I had a bit of a discussion in the in this comment section with he R, talking about how ne how necessary it is for these to be parallel with the uh, bedways. Taking a look at this, I've got. Can you hear that? It's quite a significant rock. So obviously this corner is significantly lower than the other three. Just to check the parallelism with between these faces and the bedway, I've set up a dial test indicator. So this side, I'm measuring about seven units. If I turn that around, this side I'm measuring about six. I'll step scrape this just in two steps just to bring those ends down a little bit. So after a first roughing uh, pass with the scraper, we still pretty much only have contact on the ends, so we still need to do more through the, these ends, and this is already starting to widen up, and we're getting a wee bit of contact on that edge. I'll bring you back once I've finished the scraping on this part. Well that didn't take too long, I only did about four or five passes to get it um, scraped in. This is only a static surface, two things bolted together, so it doesn't need a very high point density. And I'll just check how, whether we end up with the way parallel. So on this side we're at 9.2. And this side we're about 9.8, 9.7. So still about a half a thou of difference, but it doesn't really make a big difference here because I still have to scrape in the tapers, so all of that all comes out in the wash. Next up, I'll scrape the matching surfaces to fit. So those have also now been scraped in. This one took quite a bit of work to bring it in. The other one was only probably three or four passes, but this really took quite a bit to get the bowing out of the surface. So now we have got flat clamping surfaces. The next thing to look at is gonna be the tapers.
I now have acceptable contact on both of the tapered surfaces. This thinner um, gib block was more bent. It did take a bit more scraping than the other one. Uh, and I still have maybe a little bit light contact through the middle, but this is a, once again just a static surface, so it doesn't need to have a very high points per inch of bearing surface. Well, that's the end of the steel then, and I can now move on to, um, to scraping the gibbs themselves, which are again cast iron, which is much nicer to scrape. My strategy for the gibbs strips is to first um, scrape one side flat, and then fit them up, blew up the, um, the surfaces on the actual lathe, and scrape the second side to the taper on the lathe. So the first pass is of course just, just putting a cross hatch on it and giving you something to scrape against. So we're already starting to get hinging closer to the thirds rather than to the middle. And as you can see, we're starting to get more even coverage along the entire length. So that was only three passes of rough scraping to get the, the bow out of the um, work. And now I can scrape for more um, points. All that good enough. Remember most of this end is going to be cut off and also of course the the very tip of this is going to be cut off so it looks like quite good contact throughout and I'll move on to the second gib.
So even after the first rough scraping, this one's already starting to come in quite nicely. So now after three cycles, the hinge points already moved from the end into about here and here. So it's getting flatter and it looks like we can probably start, start spotting for points pretty soon. I'll do one more heavy, heavy scraping cycle through both of these areas and then I'll probably move on to scraping for points. So after four cycles, it's hinging nicely, four cycles to get to here. I'll now move on to scraping for points. While watching Stefan Gotteswinter's uh, YouTube channel, do you guys also have a constant like Wayne's World feeling? I know I do. Okay, that's starting to come in nicely. Once again, anything beyond about this point is just going to be cut off and go in the scrap bin. But I've still got a bit of a hollow through here. I probably switched to finish scraping a little bit too early because I really need to bring this spot and this spot down a bit more. So I guess switching back to rough scraping. I'm really not sure how stable this metal is, um, having been machined on both sides. I sort of have a feeling that as soon as I turn it over and start scraping the other side, it's going to banana in a different direction. So this is going to be good enough for now. Once I start scraping the other side, I might have to come back and touch up these original faces. But for now, I'll call those good enough. So to fit this gib strip, I've blued up the underside of the way there. And what I do is just insert it, slide it a bit. Obviously it jams quite quickly. And as you can see, it's starting to come in. A bit more scraping to go, but I'm getting reasonably even contact now. I've now done a bunch more passes and getting very close to the final um, fit up. When I look at this, I'm going to be cutting off from here and I'm going to need about maybe 20 millimeters here. So the area of actual coverage is looking pretty darn good. I'll just do another couple of passes to try and increase the increase the number of points, but that's going to be pretty much finished. Here you can see why it's important to first 
uh, give a rough scraping sort of cross hatching to provide some texture. If you try and uh, blue up a surface which is nearly a ground finish in this case, uh, the, the spotting compound just smears and you really don't know is this all contact or is this just a blob that smeared across the whole length. So next thing I need to do is first give it a rough cross hatching, blue it up again and then we'll see where it goes from there. I'm now about halfway through scraping this front gib strip. Uh, there's a lot more contact and surface area than on the back, which does actually make it a little bit easier to scrape. I'm just rough scraping at this stage. Got pretty good contact through here and through here. Just need to bring bo both of those ends down so that get contact in the center as well. You know, last week I said that my Linux CNC guru because complaining about too much scraping, so I didn't do any. In the comments section, of course, then I got complaints that there was not enough scraping, so I should show more. This is feeling pretty good. And I think it's looking pretty good. So that's the second uh, tapered gib finished and ready for the next step, which will be cutting them to length, slotting them and making up the adjustment screw. Well, I must say it's a bit of a pucker factor with using that little two millimeter carbide end mill. Normally I can kill something like that with, well, at least by looking at it and sometimes I think I'm able to kill a two millimeter carbide end mill just by thinking about it. Must be some sort of Jedi skill, I guess. By the way, just like um, Ricky and the Trailer Park Boys, I also only use WD-50 for uh, cleaning. It's not much of a lubricant, but it's good cleaner. Well, they're finished. Next up, I need to make the adjusting screws. Well, that's too slow, so I'm gonna to need to change gear. Now the Bolly offers a total of 24 different speeds. First off from the motor, which is here in the base, there are two pulleys up to a lay shaft. So you've got a high or a low speed pulley with a two to one reduction uh, between them. Then from the lay shaft up to the main spindle, you've got three gear ratios of a big flat belt drive. Then a, a back gear, which is a four to one reduction. And finally, it's a Darlander motor, so it's got windings for two different speeds. And so you've got a, a, a setting speed one or speed two on the main um, electrical switch. Now that's a bit too slow. I just need to move these belts over to, the, to a higher speed. Some bollies have a lever coming through here, which acts on the belt. So while the machine's running, you can just move the lever to move the belt from one stage to another. Unfortunately, mine doesn't have it, so I've got to go and do it manually. And because my back gear's uh, seal is a bit leaky, this belt's always quite well lubricated, so it's a pretty disgusting job. If any of you own an old bolly that you want to part out, if it's got that gear change mechanism, please let me know, because I'd love to buy it.
Initially I'm aiming for 10 millimeter diameter, which is going to be the outer portion which actually drives the um, Gibbs group. Gibbs. slightly under, but for that drive feature it's not going to be critical. Next up we need to turn the threaded portion down to 4 millimeters. Now I'm not going to do that in one go because if I go all the way 18 millimeters by 4 millimeter diameter on a support without any support that would be possibly too flexible. So what I'll do is I'll, do it, I'll take it down in two, two parts. When I first got this lathe, one of the first uh, accessory tools I made for it was this um, tailstock die holder. It's basically a terrible design. I kind of messed up the design pretty badly. Um, unfortunately, it works sort of, as it's one of those tools that works well enough that you don't bother doing it again properly, but. <laughs> Every time you use it, you're thinking, man, this sucks, I should really make another one. Oh well. Among its problems, the tape is too short. Uh, the taper doesn't actually hold properly, but of course, it doesn't need to counter any, any rotational force or any torque. Both this section which uh, aligns the tool here and also in the main body of the tool should be significantly longer to allow the, the tool to just pull itself up along the thread. This is so short that you have to keep repositioning the tailstock. So all in all, a crap design. Next up, I need to pat it off. So the last job on these, the tapered saddle gibbs, is to slot the end of the adjustment screws, which I'll do on the mill using a slitting saw. If anyone wants to replicate it, here's the highly accurate design data for these adapter screws. That's now the completed set of parts for the tapered Gibbs set. You can see the two adjusting screws, which click into these uh, slots, cut in the end of the Gibbs strips. I'll install it on the lathe and get it adjusted, and we'll see how it actually works in practice. So far, with just the front Gibbs strip installed, I've got a very nice, smooth, very even sort of feel across the whole bed. Except at the very, very end of travel out here, it gets a little bit tighter, probably over the last tiny bit of travel, which basically you never use anyway. But otherwise, it's extremely even. And about a quarter of a turn adjustment on the gib strip takes it to locking the locking 
down on the uh, on the bed so very nice let's install the rear one and see how that works See where I've taken the paint off across here? The diameter of the adjustment screw is too large for this rear for this rear gib. So I'll have to put that back on the lathe and just take that down a, a little bit. So I took the diameter of the back this um, adjuster down by half a millimeter and it's now clearing the bed. Uh, I've got it adjusted, it feels really nice nips up slightly at this end as did the front um, but you can see it, it only very very slightly I can with a move it off the end of the bed and in the forward direction it nips up just about here a bit tighter so it looks like I will need to just get in there with the, the um, straight edge touch off the bed in this area and just see where I've got a, a slight uh, tight spot there but for the most of the way, it feels really nice. Absolutely no play or anything in there. I'll put a dial test indicator on it. We'll have a look at how much deflection we get. With the bed adjusted nicely, as before, there's basically no vertical movement other than if I really force things and start distorting the bed. But there's definitely no looseness or wobble between the bed and the in the saddle now so yeah I'm very happy with that